We're now going to take a look at a concept called fixed positioning. And it's a CSS positioning concept that can lead to some interesting results. And I have a couple of examples of using this positioning within a web page design to give you some ideas about how it can be used. And then we're going to go out to a web page and add this property. So I am on the CSS Zen Garden website. And this website is designed to give you examples of working with a variety of CSS properties. And I have a couple of examples for the fixed positioning property. So this particular one is called Under the Sea. And if you scroll down, you can see how there's an image on there that remains still while I scroll the rest of the page content. So it gives it an interesting effect in the design. There's another good example on this. It's a movie theater. And basically, it's like you're sitting at the movies. You're surrounded by theater content. And when I go to scroll, the only thing that scrolls is that main screen area of the theater. Those are examples of fixed positioning. What you do is assign that property to content on the page, and it keeps it still. The rest of the content goes ahead and scrolls like it normally would by default. So let's do that to a web page, and that'll give you a chance to work with it. I have fixed.html open here, and it looks like this does need a save, so I'll go ahead and do that. So there's my fixed page. And what I did was I corrected some content. This text was pulling up alongside my images. So I just put my cursor in front of it and hit return. And I just made sure that that was working for all of the images. So the idea is this is a page about Las Vegas. Now what I want to do is I have a panorama of Las Vegas that I'm going to place at the bottom of the page so that when they scroll, that panorama view will always remain on the page. And I have a file to assist us with doing that. So let's look at the CSS styles that are being used on the page right now before we change anything. So the styles.css has some styles for let me open this up a little bit. Some styles for our text, for our header tags, and for my paragraph and list item. There's also a specials class that I'm not using specifically on this page. So that's our external style sheet. Now I've also added some rules specific to this page on here, and that is the wrapper. That's what's containing our content. So you see, you see the little yellow dotted line right here. And if I turn off the color on this page, that little dotted line, that's an indication of where the page ends that Dreamweaver puts in, it turns black on white. When your background's black, you can see it turns yellow so we can see it. In the content area, I have a font family of Tahoma. And in my body tag, that's what's giving my page its black background. So if I click in front of the background, you can see it turns to white. I'm disabling that background color property. So I'll turn that back on. We're going to keep it black. Now by default, all page content is aligned left. At some point, I would want to center this. But for now, we're going to focus on that fixed property. So to simplify the concept, what I've done is in the Files panel, I have put a text file. And this has the CSS code to customize our background image for the bottom of the page. So I'm going to open that. It's within the text folder within your course files. And you can obtain those always from the Exercise Files tab underneath the video. I'll open up fixed.txt, and you can see I didn't want you to have to type this out. So just go ahead and copy that content. 
What this is, is we're going to create a new ID called Vegas and add some properties. So I'll go over to my fixed page, the HTML page, and I'm going to move into code view. And on line 14 here, right above the body tag, I'm going to paste that code in. Now because it was code, I have to paste it into code view. So that's why I'm in code view. So place your cursor on line 14 and I'm going to do a paste. We'll take a look at what those various properties are, but let's look at the page before we do that so you can see what's been added. I'll go ahead and put this in the browser. There's my browser window, and you can see as I scroll that Las Vegas panorama stays in place. Everything scrolls down underneath it. Because my page is black, it's a little bit difficult to see what's going on. But my panorama is centered within the browser window. So if I make this browser window narrower, you'll see it remains centered. And that's what we're going to want to do for the rest of the page. But now when I scroll, that panorama is always available. So let's look at the properties that did that and with doing so, we have access in the CSS Styles panel, I'll double click this, to all of those properties to easily see them. So let me move this over just a little bit so we can see those a little bit better. And I'll expand this. There we go. So what properties did I add to this background image to make it appear? Well, first of all, it's a background image so I can add text on top of it. So it's a background image here. I added a background color so that once it fills out and the browser window gets wider, there's black on each side. If I didn't have that and I let the browser window get real wide, it's not going to look very nice. So feel free to go ahead and play with some of these properties. I have the background position for that content centered. And you can see if I hover over this, it's the horizontal position and also the vertical position. So the first background position is for horizontal. The second one is for vertical and they're both set to center. That's why that image stays centered in my browser window. Now, if I turn off background repeat of no repeat, when I put this in the browser, what happens to background images is they repeat based on the amount of space. So I will get this image showing multiple times. As you can see, it just keeps going. Now, if that's the effect I want for this image, that's fine. And it does kind of add to the panorama piece. So I'll leave it up to you if you like that or not. What happens is the image fills out the space. If I make this a little bit smaller, you can see it perfectly aligns that image and sets it up. So it's completely filling the space. And one reason it's doing that, I'll turn on the no repeat so we only get one, is here is my position of fixed. Now what happens if I remove that? So I'll disable it, save the page, and put it back in the browser. Let's look at what happens if it's not fixed. You can see it scrolls just like the rest of the page. So the scrolling behavior is a default behavior in HTML. What the position of fixed does is get rid of that default behavior and says always keep it where it's located. My width is 100% of the browser window, so that's why it fully fills it out no matter what size my browser window is, it's going to fill it all the way. What the Z index does is it's considered your stacking order. And what I want to do is make sure that this image stays on top of any content that would scroll. So a Z index, the higher the number, the higher it is in the web page. So you can think of this almost like layering in a graphics program, if you're familiar with that or basically stacking things on top of one another. So let's say you have a stack of books. The lower the number, the lower it is in the stack. 
and whatever the numbers are, as long as they're higher than the previous ones in the z-index, it will go on top. So I set this z-index to 10 because the standard page content is set at 1. That will make sure my background image always stays on top when I go to scroll instead of ending up underneath. So that's an example of the fixed positioning piece in CSS, and this page is set up, so feel free to modify and play around with it using these various properties and enabling and disabling them to give you the strong idea of what fixed positioning is all about. But that is the CSS property called fixed positioning. Thank you for watching educator.com. See you in the next lesson.